trying to make sure I wasn't just going to like just burp, you know, right whenever we started. But, oh, maybe we could even leave that one in there. there. <laughs> that would be a very good <laughs> intro. What is up, Taylor's Welcome. <laughs> students? Um, yeah, I hope that you guys have had a great week. Um, I was super thrilled to get to see some of you guys here for the service on Sunday. That went really well. Um, so, yeah. And some at both services, early and the later one. There yeah. Kids at both. That was awesome. Yeah. That was that was really great. I was super thrilled to get to to see well to see you guys, uh, but also just to get to meet people and um, to worship together with everybody. Um, that was that was fantastic. So. It was very very good. Yeah. Um, so this week, um, hopefully hopefully y'all's y'all's parents have told you guys if if they're in the youth group meet. Um, we had canceled um, our youth worship event on Friday, um, so that is, well, we postponed it. Right. That might be the, the better term for it, but um, yeah, so that is going to be next Friday. I don't remember what date that is. I need to bring my phone, so I don't know what the date is. Well, from the date that is posted on this YouTube video, like underneath it, just, just add eight days and that's the day. The 21st. The 21st. Okay. Oh, oh, it'll actually be nine days. Well, today's the 12th. It's Wednesday the 12th. Mm -hmm. Or the 21st. The 21st? Because uh -huh. the 13th would be Thursday and the 14th Friday, I don't know. And then I don't know. Week. This is too much brain power, guys. So, I just, next Let's Friday. Let's put it in the comments what the date is. <laughs> That's probably a good idea. Um, so, yeah. So, this week we are again continuing on through the the amazing letter of James. Um, we're going to be going through James chapter two, one through nine. Uh, next, this is kind of a two-parter. Next week we're going to finish up this little little section. Um, so yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead. I would I would encourage you guys to uh, to go ahead, pause the video, and then read through James chapter two, one through nine, and then. Unpause it and yeah. Okay, so James chapter 2. My dear brothers and sisters, how can you claim to have faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ if you favor some people over others? For example, suppose someone comes into your meeting dressed in fancy clothes and expensive jewelry, and another comes in who is poor and dressed in dirty clothes. If you give special attention and a good seat to the rich person, but you say to the poor one, you can stand over there or else sit on the floor. Well, uh, doesn't this discrimination show that your judgments are guided by evil motives? Listen to me, my dear brother. Okay, wait, wait, wait. We're cutting off there. We're one through four. I start, I start, I was fixed to start reading. I thought you were reading thing. the whole one through nine. I was ready to go. Let's uh, go. <laughs> I was just going to read this chunk at, a, chunk at a time. But then you did say it was two parts. So my Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, so we are, again, we're in the Epistle of James, uh, this letter, and James was writing to this, this group of Christians, uh, Jewish Christians in the early, you know, or sometime in the first century, like, well, right, right at the start of the church, and, and at this time, they're, they're really trying to figure out, okay, how do we do church? Um, how are we supposed to do church? And... Because they didn't meet in church buildings, they were yeah. meeting in homes. Yeah, yeah, they met in homes, like... They were, they were just, it was a really weird, just small group of people. Mm -hmm. Like today we would probably call some, you know, people like that a cult, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if that's the best way to put it, but I mean, but back then it was, it was, that was a much more normal thing, yep. but Christians were really, really weird. Um, it was brand new. Yeah, brand it was, new. it's brand new. Nobody had any idea who this, this Jewish guy from Nazareth was mm -hmm. and and it was really weird that Christians would go and celebrate that, hey, this guy was dead. <laughs> like, And, um, yeah, it was just a very strange... And they would thing. talk about him, that he rose from the dead. And yeah, they, they would talk about him as if he's alive. Yeah. You know? and, um, so, yeah, so early first century, trying to figure out, okay, what is this whole church thing about? What does it mean to be a follower of Christ? Um, and, and in this church that James is writing to, or this group of churches, really... Um, he, there is, you can tell just from what's kind of going on in here, what he's saying is he's, he's writing to, 
um, to these Christians who who have had some problems with how um, the Christians within the church are treating the rich versus the poor. And so you can tell that uh, that James is writing against um, treating the the rich different than that. Um, he's he's calling them to to love on the poor and to to treat them um, as as Christians. Well, to. and in you know in this day and age, there was a huge gap between the rich and the poor, and there were you know you could not escape your station in life. Like if you were born poor, you were going to die poor. Like. There was not the American dream, you know, yeah. of you can work hard and you can get out of that situation. So it really had a different context. So people really, really cared a lot about how they, what they wore. They put a lot of stock in that. They put a lot of stock in um, their appearance and and what they presented mm-hmm. themselves as, as they were presenting themselves as having wealth, as having money. Yeah. Um, do you think that's different today? I, I I don't think that's different at all today, because um, we within our churches, within our youth groups, even like uh, or me, just like myself growing up, my family, we weren't we were not we weren't like dirt poor, but I mean, we also we didn't get that nice stuff. Like, I mean, I still I still shop at Walmart, but that's just because now I'm just too cheap to do anything else. <laughs> so, um, but I mean, you know, I I get the feeling of you know like when you walk into a room and. You know, people look down on you yeah. for for not having you know, not having iPhone 10 or you know whatever it is that you know that that these other people who come from wealthier families or backgrounds have. And, yeah, or um, a different style of jeans that was you know two seasons ago versus yeah. Versus, you know, this was even more so than just fashion. Though. Yeah, really, they were defining their whole who they were as a person, who they were as their everything about them based yeah. on their first initial initial yeah. look at them yeah. it was either and, no yeah. you're either the haves or the have nots yeah. you either go over here or you go over here yeah and again I mean this this really determined like their their position in, in society um, you know if you if you walk into a place with you know with gold rings who's dressed super fancy like I mean people are gonna look like hey this guy is important we need it we need to treat him really good because like you know th- think about it um, maybe if you know whenever you guys were growing up, or you know in your within your family, and you you knew that maybe like hey your parents' boss was going to come over for mm-hmm. dinner or something like that, um, you know I think you you would treat them a lot differently. Like probably like you would treat you would act in a certain way. You would do things differently based off of that information because hey this person's really important. Um, or how you clean your room. Like, there's a way that you clean your room, like when your friend comes over versus when company comes over. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. we have that in our house. We have just your everyday clean, and then we have company clean. You know, like, you put out the fancy towels, and you clean out from underneath <laughs> your bed. And, you know, I mean. <laughs> oh, man. So, but what he's saying is, what James is addressing here is the church should not have those kinds of distinctions. Yeah. There is no level of haves and have nots in the church. Yeah. Yeah, and so James James continues on. He says, Listen to me, dear brothers and sisters. Hasn't God chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith? Aren't they the ones who inherit the kingdom? He promised to those who love him. But you dishonor the poor. Isn't it the rich who oppress you and drag you into court? Aren't they the ones who slander Jesus Christ whose noble name you bear? Those are harsh words. It's, it is really harsh. Like, I mean, um, I mean, it's. I, th- I, I don't know. I feel like it sounds good for me just because, like, because I did grow up like that, and like, you know, I also, don't, you know, I don't make a crazy amount of money now or anything like that. But, um, but I always, I, I think that we need to, we always have to be, you know, caught, like, thinking about, like, okay, how, how are we treating different people? And, and are we are we treating them based in a way that is just that is just us giving ourselves up for them? Is it is it in a self sacrificial like, hey, I love this person, I want what is absolutely just best for them, um, I want to just love on them and um, you know help help lead them to Christ and to to really just restore their humanity. 
I guess well, you that's know, really what. Yeah, because that was one of the biggest <clears throat> arguments that the Pharisees had against Jesus is because he lived among people they thought of as less than, as yeah. people that he thought of as unclean or, you know, that he was constantly questioned, why does he dine with sinners? Why is he hanging out with tax collectors? Yeah. People that they thought were in this category of you can't, you can't be anything. And then those people, because of their interaction with Jesus, became the start of this mm -hmm. incredible movement of the church and went to the four corners of the world sharing, you know, the gospel. Um, and so he really is, is confronting that, yeah. that kind of prejudice, yeah. that kind of, you know, I'm just going to instantly make this snap judgment about you without ever giving you any sort of influence, you know, any sort of ability to make a connection. I'm instantly going to decide whether you're worth my time or not. Yeah, you snapped, and I instantly just thought of the Thanos snap. Like, oh, that's I, I don't think I don't know if I could if now after watching Avengers, like if I could ever possibly get that out of my yeah. head anymore. But um, but yeah, it's that's I think that's really hitting just you know the heart of what James is talking about. Hey, yeah. what is up, Kyle? What Ship up? in your fantastic, fabulous, yeet this heat T-shirt. Yeet, yeet. What are we talking about? We are talking about James chapter 2, 1 through 9. Don't hit your Bible on the table. It's, it's my Bible. <laughs> it's my Bible and I want it now. We're talking about favoritism and partiality. And yeah. Well, good. Since I'm the favorite, it's a good chance for me to show up. That is. That is. So I just want to come in and sit and see what was yeah. going on. Because I'm downloading some videos for this video I'm making. So I wanted to see. So, so I'm sorry, where were we? So, so. Partiality and favoritism. Are, are, we, are we almost done? Partiality and favoritism. Are we... We, we're just kind of in the middle. We are about to look over at an example of this in Scripture, of a story that Jesus told in Luke chapter 10. Holy moly. Yeah. Right on time for the Good Samaritan and yeah. how, how good how he Jesus is. told this story. I like it. Let's do it. Yeah, Absolutely. let's do it. So, you want me to go ahead and introduce the story? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So, Luke chapter 10, Jesus is telling this story about a Samaritan. Now, we may not understand what a Samaritan is because um, we don't have Samaritans right now here where we are in this room. But they were from a group of people. They were a group of people who um, the Jews very much looked down on. They were, were very much seen as less than. Um, so much so that when Jesus is on it you know his journey with the disciples they go around it you know because they don't want to go through it because of the the turmoil and the chaos that's in there and so um jesus tells the story um in luke chapter 10 verse 30 through 37 um so the um jesus is telling the story about a man who's going from jerusalem to jericho and there is someone who attacks him. He's attacked by robbers, yeah. beaten and left for dead. And um, he gives three examples of people who pass by. And um, the first one um, passes by on complete the other side of the road. And the second one is the Levite, who's the priest, the keeper of the, the law, the keeper of the worship. And he does the same thing. He completely passes by on the other side. And then a Samaritan comes who would be his enemy, his mortal enemy. Like, you would have nothing to do with him. And he not only helps him, but he takes him to a place and, and it has to make sure he's cared for. He pays money to make sure that he's safe and is able to be cared for. And so he's just drawing a stark contrast between um, who should have cared for him and who actually cared for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, at, at the end of that story... What is it that that the, the where is it? And then he asked them, he says, um, and Jesus yeah. kind of sums up, and here's, here's the question that he asked the people he tells the story to. He says, which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? And the lawyer said, the one who showed him mercy, which is the Samaritan, the one that was unexpected. And he says, Jesus told him, you go and do likewise. Yeah, I absolutely love that part. What do you think on that, Kyle? That's terrible. It's awful. No, it, it, no, it's it's I mean, it's a great story, absolutely, yeah. and it's it's a it's a wonderful it's a wonderful depiction. I mean, that's the thing is, 
So I think you, you start to really understand, you remember that, that, that heritage was everything to these people. Family and heritage was everything. The reason that the Jews and the Samaritans hated each other was because when, when the Jews got carried off into Babylon, the Samaritans, they weren't the Samaritans at that time, they were just Jews. They were the Jews that were left. So here's the thing. If you're going to carry somebody off, you're going to take the smartest, you're going to take the richest, you're going to take the best looking. Everybody else that's left are the people that stays. The people that stay still have to figure out a way to live as well. Everything's been destroyed. Their walls have been torn down. Their, their, um, their temple has been looted. So what happens, though, is that these people, whether they were people that, that were left immediately in that area or whether they were people from Israel that kind of flooded into that area, um, they intermarried. They, they kind of mixed with other peoples around them. And then whenever they come back from Babylon, when the, when the people that got carried off and their descendants come back from Babylon, they go, hey, this is our land. Well, the people that are living there are going, no, this is our Everything, land. Yeah. And so what happens is you have these people that, that are saying, no, this is my land, and no, this is my land. The problem is they're both right, um, but you have what? They looked down on the Samaritans. And if you're a person that is looked down upon, if you've ever been looked down on, you know how you're going to respond to that. You're not going to respond kindly either. So they're looking down on you. You're hating them because you get... And it just goes and goes and goes. And so then generations go by. I mean, this is literal generations. I mean, this is hundreds of years later that they're telling this story. And depending on how you want to go about it, the lawyer goes, uh, he says, the one who showed him mercy. I've heard it preached before that he wouldn't say Samaritan because he couldn't bring himself to say Samaritan. Maybe that's true or maybe it's not. I don't know. But I think it's really cool because what it does is, is it paints everybody in new light. So when you go back to James and you start talking about... Um, uh, favoritism and how we treat people, um, you really start to to see that Jesus is not just you know like, hey man, that guy that's nice to you, be nice to him. Like, yeah. like, like you are the one who's who is supposed to, without context and pretense, you're the one that's supposed to take that step of caring for your neighbor and being a neighbor in that sense. And so you do, you have that, and and it brings the the good Samaritan into a whole new realm and a whole new light. I think, I think a lot of times we just talk about it in terms of being nice. Like, be a nice person. Be a good guy. When really, it's caring for other people on a level that disregards how they treat you. Yeah. That, that killed it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, and James James continued on. And he's, he said, yes, indeed, it's good whenever you obey the royal law as found in scriptures. And this, this royal law, it's, it's just... Love your neighbor as yourself. Um, and he says, but if you favor some people over others, you're, you're committing a sin. You are, you're guilty of breaking the law. Um, and so James, James is saying, yeah, no, it's, it's pretty bad what you guys are doing now. And so you guys need to stop it and start loving each other, loving your neighbor, loving the ones that who nobody else is going to go and love. Um, and that's, that's one thing that I love so much about the gospel is just that um, is that was in the gospel story you see Jesus just going in and um, just breaking through all these social norms, societal structures, all of this, and he's he's not caring about that. He's he's loving the people who who society says that isn't good enough for him. Um, so why is James telling him to? Why is James telling him to, to love like Jesus? Because because we're. Well, we're commanded to. Do we're it. commanded to, yeah. Wait, yeah. Why was it that Why was it that Jesus came in and started started breaking all of these societal and cultural barriers with love? Good time to hit pause right here. By the way, all right. Good time to hit pause. See, here's the deal. They didn't know that I was stepping in. All right, and so now I'm in here asking questions. Good time to hit pause because at one, I want you to answer before they answer. All right, and before I eventually give the place that I'm going, I, maybe they get there. I, I literally, I, I, I put this on them, but. Um, you answer. Why was it that Jesus came in and started breaking societal barriers with love? And why is it that James is so adamantly commanding us to break societal barriers with love? All right, so hit pause. And we're back. All right. Why did Jesus break so many societal barriers with love? What was his goal? I, I think that, I guess a short, short part of it is that um, God... God was coming down to the earth, and He He made a promise to uh, to restore everything, to to create, to have a new creation, to to bring forth His kingdom of God. Um, and it's it's one that, that we learn about later down in Revelation, um, and it's talking about how how God one day you know God is going to make everything right. 
Um, there, there will be no more pain, no more darkness, no more, no more sorrow. Um, and Jesus coming down, that, that kind of, I think, jump-started that. Um, we, are, we are living in the kingdom of God right now, and we are, we are working to um, further that. Absolutely. No, good yeah. No, good start. Heather, what well, you got? And the gospel's for everyone. Because yeah. at this point, the religious system was for the haves, not the have-nots. I mean, you only had access to God if you were of a Jewish tradition, if you were born into this faith, if you could trace this heritage. And Jesus is saying, it's open to everyone. He's, yeah. he's having you know, dinner with tax collectors and people who had been overlooked and, and he's touching people with leprosy and he, he's healing people on the Sabbath day, which broke all of their religious customs. Um, and so he, he's just blowing through all that and making the gospel accessible to everyone. Absolutely. Love. That's the thing is, is love is not bound by cultural norms. Mm -hmm. And and so that's, I mean, he is, he is literally making love and forgiveness, uh, completely accepted because you're right I mean just like you like you were saying is that and, and I mean you you were saying this yeah. too you, you were you were using a little bit more of college language um, yeah. but that's okay you're a college student that happens um, but this is the thing is, is that, that that Jesus was here and he was showing love to people that had never been shown love before I mean you've got people that are cripples laying at the gate that Jesus is showing love to here's the deal guys like that was not a cool thing to have happen at that point like you're a cripple at the gate not only are you a cripple at the gate you are despised because you are a cripple at the gate um you have you have the woman that are, at the well you have the woman is hi i mean she's hiding she's going in the hottest part of the day to do a, a, a hard job and he is giving her value and speaking to her which was so beyond absolutely I mean, it was they even say why are you why are you doing this why are you talking to her you literally if you go to any of the four gospels and you open up yeah now now hang, you, you can't open it up to any of the parts where like he's being crucified because at this point it, the, the, the narration has moved on open it up to any other point and i can almost guarantee you that jesus is showing love to someone who had not been shown love to that point there, not, fine. There are there are some where he he heals some people's children, and but I mean, but really, you can think of, think about all of the people in Scripture that Jesus showed love to that societal norms and Jewish norms would not have shown love to at that point. That would have cast them aside. Well, think about the man who had been born blind. Yeah. I mean, literally, they drag him in front of Jesus and say, "Who's the one who made the mistake? Did this guy do it, or did his parents?" Like that's yeah. how the whole view about his whole entire life was, is that he's a mistake. Yeah. And he says, oh no, you are totally wrong. He was created for the purpose to show God's glory. And mm -hmm. he's giving this man value and, and value to his suffering, value to his life, a purpose to his life. That's that's love. So you beat me to the transition, Dan. Very nice. Finally. So now, so now, all right, I'm just sitting here like. So, so here's. We're so, so glad you asked this. Oh, out. Uh, hey, I'm happy too. So, so here's, so, so then here's, here's where we go now. You ready? All right. So we, we answered the, re, the the question about Jesus. All right. Now the next question, then, with that in mind, why is James so adamant that we love one another in that same way? All right. Hit pause. Good time to ask the question and pause. And we're back. All right. So. <coughs> oh, I was just. Oh, you're reading your notes. Oh, I'm no, sorry. No, no, yeah, notes. Oh, he's got no, notes over here that no one can read no. but him. We talked about how bad his, his handwriting is. So anyway, I, so I, I just came and completely ignored it. I'm, I'm apparently I'm rewriting the lesson. Sorry, guys. Um, so here, so so then so then here's the question. All right, Alex, you go first. So why is James so adamant that we love in the same way? Knowing, knowing that my transition was going to be the blind man that they pulled before and said, this guy's a mistake. Who messed up, him or the people before him? I mean, I would, I would take it back to, to just the central kind of, I think, theme of James, mm -hmm. especially up to this point, is that, um, is that faith without works, as, as we will read later down in this chapter, um, is dead. It's, it's pointless. Um, what is the point of of claiming to be a follower of Christ, of, of saying, yes, we are saved, like, we are Christians, we go to church every Sunday, we do all these good things. What's the point of it, though, if, if we don't actually live that out? Um, and James, James is writing to, to, the, to the rich in this community um, who, who are being treated very differently because they are rich. Um, and, and I think 
probably because you know some of the Christians in that community they're they're probably getting a, some sort of a benefit from that, and that's that's not how that's not how it's supposed to work in a church. It's not how it's supposed to work in in the kingdom of God. Uh, well, that's right. Like the people that you're, and you're right. It's hard. I mean, let's face it. It's hard. And, and I mean, yeah. when you are a first century church and you are trying to um, uh, find ways to support the poor and the needy. The rich people are going to be the ones that, that are able to give you the money to do that. And so it's hard not to treat them differently, to be really frank. Absolutely. So, so Heather, what do, you, what do you think? Well, in having this partiality, they're mimicking the culture around them. He's saying, we're supposed to be imitators of Christ. We're supposed to love like Jesus did, and that's what Jesus did. Yeah. So, who's, so in, in, in the culture there, and who's got the worth? The one with the money. The one with the money, right? In Christ's eyes, who's the got status. the worth? The one who believes. All of us. All of uh, all of us, right? So here's the deal. Okay, so knowing where my transition was, okay? Sorry, they're doing really good. I totally, they were not prepared for this whatsoever. <laughs> I'm not even giving them hints, okay? So so here's the deal. So so th- the blind guy, they go, and they're, they're going past this blind guy, and they say, hey, who messed up? That guy or the one before him? Keep in mind, the blind guy can probably hear them. Okay. He's, bl- he's not deaf. He's just exactly. Blind. Exactly. <laughs> Look, here's the deal. Yes, you ever, he you, okay. You ever, you ever, you ever been in a room before and somebody was talking about you like you weren't there? Now they weren't, but they weren't like being nice. They were like, boy, that Alex, he's a great guy. It's like, man, Alex is a real dense idiot, isn't he? <laughs> like, it's one of those deals. Here's the deal. They say that's what they say. So they're assuming that he has no value and that he is messed up. Like, like who messed up? This guy or his parents? They've already made that assumption. All right, you ready for this? Here's the deal. There are going to be a lot of people. You've experienced it. I've experienced it. They've experienced it. There are going to be a lot of people out there that don't experience love and that don't don't view themselves as having value. Here's the thing: if Christ loved, or God so loved the world that He sent His one and only Son, and therefore Christ came and died for everyone, everyone has value. The thing is, though, is that so often what happens is we get stuck in this mode of valuing only those that we view as having value. That now what happens is Christ's love is actually contained, once again, by the cultural norms that we see around us. Therefore, if you're rich, you've got value. And, and if I allow that to penetrate the church the way that it was penetrating here, then what happens is now Christ's love is now contained by the fact that I don't view others with value. That now I say, you got to have money to have value. And so I'm setting the limits on how far Christ's love can go. Now, that doesn't mean that Christ's love does not reach there, but I'm setting the limits on how far Christ's love can go. What is our purpose? Our purpose is to, to, to worship Christ, to glorify God, to be like Christ. It is not to be the one who distributes the money. Now, at times that may happen in the church or whatever, but it's to show that love, to break those barriers. You're going to break more barriers with love than with anything else. Dead serious. And, 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 and that's the thing. That's the thing that I hope everybody in the youth group gets is that I hope that as we go into this time where you're going back to school with COVID, with people wearing masks, with people being being a little bit cantankerous because, I mean, they've been cooped up. And I hope that what happens is you get out there and you get the opportunity to show love to people and show love the way that Christ would love and, and allow them to see that there is something about the way that you interact with them that is different. And then you can go back. You can go back to James and you can go back to the Good Samaritan. And I'm preaching a sermon all of a sudden. I just realized I was preaching. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be preaching a sermon on you guys. So I, Alex kind of leaned back and just started listening. I'm I was just, like, oh, it feels <laughs> like I'm preaching. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I'm, I'm sorry. I literally, I hope you were going somewhere with that because I, I completely <laughs> took that over. What, well, what are you thinking of? Where <laughs> the, 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 the last part where I was going to hit on was, is, was James two one and how how does how does this deeper principle of not showing partiality at least based on appearance um, how does that how does that affect us within our church within our within our youth group um, especially you know because I've yeah. I've seen several youth groups now I've I've seen what what it looks like for a very clicky kind of youth group or even or even a very clicky church um, and and I was just gonna. You know, kind of bouncing back and forth with Heather, at least originally. You know, I'm gonna let you bounce back and forth with Heather because I've taken up so much time, already, and I need to go do this video again because otherwise we're not gonna get to talk. You probably you. just like no. doubled the length of this video. Yeah, I'm really sorry. So I hope you guys at least enjoyed it. But you know, all right, I'll see y'all later. I don't even know where to go now. Okay, well, so if we say that, if we say, okay, we've had this and we've talked about. Not showing partiality. And we talked about how 
the gospel's for everyone and how we should love people. How do you confront that in your own heart? How do you actually live that out? I, th I, think, I think the way in which I've done that is, is just by doing it. And then through doing that, my heart has been changed. Um, by by going out, I mean, it, my, I've gotten to go to through some really weird things in my ministry. Um, I mean, there's like I I have friends who, who who I love and and I try to to love them as my neighbor. I I love them as myself. And they are these friends are drug dealers. They a lot of them they do really awful things. Like and I've done awful things too. And so like I'm not you know I'm not looking down on them. Um, but I'm, I'm just going in there and I'm loving them. I'm like, hey, man, like how, how can I help you right now? Um, how, yeah, I don't know. I just, I think it's just getting out there. And then through doing that, that has allowed, that, that has given me the, I guess, being able to see it with my own eyes. Because a lot of times, like, I feel like we, we, you know, we talk about the poor um, or the needy and... Um, people like this, like the, the people that society, society doesn't want. And a lot of times we can, we can look at, we can think of it as if it's like all the way across the planet. Um, like, like it doesn't, you know, we might think this and all that, but, but we never actually see people like that. But the fact of the matter is, is that there's people like that walking among us all the time. Um, people, people who feel that they are not loved people, people who've never been shown um, the love of Christ. Yeah. So, so I, yeah. there are some, and it may be a little different going back to school the way with everything with COVID and all that. But I remember in the seventh grade, how intense it was about where you sat in the lunchroom. I mean, it was huge yeah. pressure about where you sat because where you sat determined what group you were a part of. And <clears throat> so when I think about that and how, much pressure I felt in that and you think about this through the lens of scripture here you know when you're when you're going does it does, he doesn't say go go sit with the people that you automatically fit in with yeah. he says no go show love show care show concern you know yeah. when someone comes into our grief group for the very first time and you know you give them the once over are, what are you going to do are you going to go out and invite them to come what if they look different than you what if they listen to different music than you? What if they wear a different style of clothes or speak a different language? How, how are you gonna, gonna bridge those gaps? And I, I think one of the things is seeing people, not just looking past them, but actually seeing them. And that's what Jesus did, is he actually saw people and he spent time interacting with them. And listening when they talked not not scanning the room always looking for someone better to talk to or yeah. someone easier to you know fit in with but being involved and in communicating with the person that you're face to face with at that moment in yeah. in real genuine community real genuine care for each other yeah and a lot of it too is that i think like a lot of times we don't we have no idea what other people are going through yeah. um you know, I'm I'm super guilty of it. Like a lot of times throughout my life, I I I feel like I still do. You know, if somebody asks me how I'm doing today, like I automatically say good. Like I don't yeah. even mean to. Like I just I just do it. Um, and a lot or you of say, that, oh hey, how are you? And you keep yeah. walking before you even wait for the answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I I feel like I'm pretty good at doing that. And you know, and a, but a lot of times, like it's that's just an automatic answer because I just don't want to get into you know how it is I'm actually feeling at that time yeah uh, or at least I especially did that when I was younger um, so um, I just love everybody um, don't don't be a jerk to them um, I would one thing I feel like I feel like if I were to go through like school all over again uh, like I was bullied a lot growing up and things like that and um, is I would probably just go out you know and Get a bunch of friends of mine who are bullied as well, you know, and love them and, you know, treat them like human beings, I guess. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's, that's kind of. Man, we covered some good, we, deep <laughs> stuff today. <laughs> we did. We good <laughs> stuff. Covered, covered a lot of ground. It was, it was good. Good stuff. Yeah. So, um, do you got anything else or? 
you guys are fantastic. We love you. We miss you, but we're glad to have time to just, we think about you and pray about you a lot. So yeah. you have you have great value too. So if nobody's told you that today, you do. So I, uh, I guess I'll pray us out okay. and then we'll be good. So uh, Father God, um, we, we thank you for, for this good news um, that you've given us. I thank you for these students. Um, Father, I, I ask that, that, that this good news, Father, that, that these students would hear and that they would, that they would take it in, uh, Father, and that they would, they would believe it. And through that, um, I ask that, um, that they would be able to see the world in a different way. Um, Father, I, I ask that, that, they would, that they would reach out to those who are broken, those that are hurting, um, and Father and I, I just ask that they would love them. Um, Father, I ask that, that they would love them as you've loved us. Um, Father, and um, I pray that, that if there's any of these students who, who have not yet known that love, Father, that, that they would be able to, to experience it. Um, and, and who through that would then go and share that with more people. Um, Father, uh, we are just so thankful for everything that you do in our lives and we love you and we thank you for loving us your sons and we pray